Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast. This is Elizabeth Chapel of Quilters Candy and the host of the podcast. This week, was a really fun episode for for me, selfishly. (laughs) I really enjoyed this podcast episode. And it all came about because I posted in my Instagram stories about some health stuff that I am focusing on and doing and struggling with. And this person who follows me, Dara Thomason, she reached out and just sent me a DM and I'm so glad she did. So she works with quilters on weight loss, which if you had just said that, I'd be like, what, why, why is she on the podcast? You do a deep dive. She's, it's so much more than that. Dara worked as a business coach for long arm quilters. She has some books that are published on long arm quilting, and she has a book published about running and quilting. And then she also self published a book about how to get over perfectionism. And she has been in the quilting world and now works with quilters as a life coach. And even when we were chatting, I was like, oh, everything she is talking about is relatable to business, to weight loss, to health, to our relationships. It's, it's applicable to life, to anything in life that we want to improve upon and improve. So I seriously loved chatting with Dara. I cannot wait for you to, to meet her. We were just chatting and thankfully I had hit record because the conversation just started right off the bat running and it was a good one. So I'm just going to jump in and share with you our conversation. Um, There's a few books that she's talking about. Those will be linked in the show notes, which is quilterscandy.com forward slash 112. And you can also get the link that she mentions her free uh, guide that she mentions in the podcast there as well and links to her website and podcast and her Instagram account. So let's jump in. I cannot wait for you to meet Dara. And after we wrapped up recording our podcast, which I honestly could have chatted forever and ever with her, she, we turned off the recording and she said, okay, do you want me to do some coaching for you with you? And I was like, sure. I'll never say no to that. It was so impactful. Um, I, I can't, there are no words. So it was amazing. I cannot wait for you to meet Dara. Let's jump in and you can enjoy the conversation where we started from. It's so fun to finally connect with you because when I first started um, business, I was actually like a business coach for quilters. And you were? Hold on. I didn't know this. For long armors. So I, um, like I got jobs teaching for like gamel dealers and I was like an edutainer. So they would, they would send me to these big, you know, trade shows and I would wow people with my feather class and everything (laughs) and bring them into the booth, you know, and then sell them these really beautiful machines. And then, um, I taught at UQSM in the States and, um, I taught the long arm class and it was like, I couldn't, people were like, they didn't want to leave. I'm like, listen, I will record it and I will sell it. And so I did. So I recorded like, how do you run a long arm business? And so I sold that. And then I started doing like one-on-one coaching for business and in like building your long arm business and like implementing all the mindset stuff that I do with the life coaching. That's how I got the jobs. That's how I started really building, how I lost the weight and all that. And then I had like two groups of people. I had the people who saw me lose the weight and I started helping them. And then I had my business people and I started helping them. And then it was like, okay, Dara, you got to restrain. Yep. And it was such a huge decision to not do the business um, coaching anymore. And um, so I did, I did have a few business people kind of on the side because I, I mean, I have done really well. Like it's, been amazing what I've been able to create in my, um, my life, but really the weight loss, I mean, helping women lose that mental and physical weight loss has just been 
it's like changing generations. It really is. It is. Well, well, wow. Okay. Hold on. Where do you live? I feel like we need to chat in real life. I really wish you lived closer so we could hang out more, but where do you live? So I live on Vancouver Island. Hmm. So not close. Darn it. Okay. So yeah, straight up from Seattle. Um, so I live here and, um, you can go surfing and skiing on the same day. <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll come visit them, yeah. but do you oh, come, sure. do you like come down for quilt market or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I actually tomorrow it's on my list. No. Yeah. Tomorrow's Thursday apply to quilt market and festival. So I was at quilt festival last year, which was awesome. And, um, I did quilt uh, festival in Salt Lake last year, which was really fun. And I did Garden of Quilts, which was really fun. So um, I'm doing, I'm really shaking things up. So these are the books that I've written. Uh, so I went to my first quilt market in Salt Lake seven years ago. And I, met I think with, I was there. That was one of my first quilt markets. Yeah, it was so fun. And so <laughs> I met with CNT Publishing and eventually we got this book published and this is my beginning free motion quilting and Riley Blake. It was interesting because Riley Blake had a retreat right before quilt market and they approached me and said, can you do video classes? So I did like a four day, like they flew me down. I stayed at their house. It was so fun. Wait, and you I stayed at whose house? At Riley Blake at Cindy and, and no uh, way you stayed yeah. at Cindy's house Cindy's house yeah it was so fun I'm oddly jealous right now <laughs> I know it was so and I like the best part was it was like I had like my own sound tech guy and my own like camera crew it was so fun dang and that's cool here I am like she had like her laundry was done I folded her laundry and I was like <laughs> oh am I supposed to do that but I'm just like like I'm a mom but anyways it was just like one of those weird things where I was like I'm this is so surreal um, so then I was able to get that book deal and that came. So I wrote this like three years ago and then, yeah, right before COVID, I had everything set. I was going to go to quilt market and sell it and then everything shut down, but I'd already gone to quilt market in Houston before and got this book deal done. But then I started coaching people and I had a full-time coaching practice and five children who are now homeschooled. Oh boy. So I found a friend. I was like, hey, just watch my YouTube. It's in October of 2019 and just write everything. So she was able to be the writer of it all. But I did all the illustrations and I made the book. I made the quilts at the end. And that is so cool. Yeah. And then so I wrote this book, which is like insane. So first one, walk, jog, run. Then we've yeah. got the doodle. Yeah, the doodle. So we have the doodle school, which in my YouTube channel, like in October of 2019, I did like a different design every day and the challenge. And then the, this is like a companion book. So it basically like says, okay, if the, this is your prompt is leaves. So here are like four, three examples, and then just fill out these boxes and just start building some confidence. And then here's some bigger boxes. And then the last one is like two big pages to just go for it. So it kind of, they're like training wheels to get you to feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so that those two books go together. Um, and that also was a collaboration with CNT. Mm -hmm. And then this was self-published. And I always joked when I was teaching quilting that I was the president of the perfectionist recovery because <laughs> I was like a professional long armor for like five years. Yeah. And I, at my lo local quilt shop and I was the long armor. So like Wednesday, like Wednesday was pick up and drop off. It was a pretty rural place. And then, um, I started teaching lots of classes there, but it wasn't until I had like a full coaching practice that I was really able to have the tools and the ability to really hone in on what does it take to overcome perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And so I took a week off of work and I just like went for it and wrote that book. So it's amazing. And, uh, it's part of the work that I do with women of really learning how to not be all or nothing, how to, and, and perfectionism is a strategy to survive. It was a survival strategy, right? Like when you were a little kid, if you didn't get approval from someone like that felt like death. Yep. 
And um, so of course we're not going to try, we're going to try to like get all the gold stars and you don't really have your own voice. You don't want to be too creative. You don't want to be too different because you don't want to get rejected. And it's the same thing with people pleasing. And it's the same thing with procrastination. Those were all survival strategies. Procrastination. How is that a survival strategy? Because it's like, well, so like, like you grew up with siblings, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I'm going to let my sister be the one who does that thing. And I'm going to procrastinate to do that because I don't know how my mom's going to react if I do that. And so procrastinating was really a way to say, let me like see what's happening, test the waters, let other people do it. And then maybe I'll jump in. Hmm. Is it terrible when you said, I'm not sure if my sibling, I was like, maybe if I procrastinate, they'll do it. Is that revealing more about me than I'd like to admit? (laughs) Yeah, that's okay. You're allowed. (laughs) But um, well, and also think about our lower brain. It always wants us to save energy. Yep. It wants us to like not be dangerous. It wants us to seek pleasure. So, I mean, it makes sense that if you're going to let other people do those kinds of things, I mean, that is also part of a survival strategy. True. The least amount. So this is very interesting for me because, um, I also love coaching, right? So I have like a mastermind group that we meet with and an alumni. And I literally yesterday after meeting with a group of uh, students, I was like, hmm, a lot of business is mind work. And I'm finding that the more and more that I work with people, it's mental, it's a mental game and like getting past these barriers. And the more I recognize it in others, the more I see it in myself. And I recognize, oh man, this thing I thought I got over is back again. How did you make this jump from the long arm coaching into the health and wellness area? Totally. So um, when we moved, my husband, we got transferred here and I was so unhappy. We were mortgage free and the house was adorable. We had like renovated it. Like it was so cute. And I had this great business and I had this great gig with the quilt shop and it felt amazing. And we had these like great friends and all of that. And we moved here and it's super expensive here. So no longer where we were mortgage, mortgage free. And we actually bought a rental house because the people who bought our house, we like traded houses and then we bought this house. It was like one of those like super serendipitous, like this is kind of crazy kind of event. And so now we were landlords and it was just, all these things. And then my youngest son went to school and I, I just, I thought, I don't even know who I am, like without having a little like kid hanging around with me all the time. So I started gaining all this weight and I was like really unhappy. And normally I'm like super happy, go lucky kind of person. And, um, Dina Ruder, who is a fabric designer for Riley Blake, she became a life coach and she put out on, this is like back in 2018, And she put out on social media, she's like, Hey, I need some guinea pigs. I'm becoming a life coach. And I was like, you know what? I have, I'm, I'm a mess. So she gave me six free coaching calls and she started teaching me these actual tools, like practical tools, what to, how to organize your brain. And, um, that's what made all the difference for me. So that's when I started losing all the weight. I started lose. I started like doing crazy new things like applying to be these instructors and making connections and, and doing all of that. And that's, that made the biggest difference. And then I started to really change physically. Like I started the inside out approach. And as I got myself, uh, cleaned up, (laughs) then I was able to help others. Hmm. Yeah. And so that, let's see, that was 2018. So it was Dina Rudder. Okay. This name is so familiar. Did she ever design little like sticky dots that go on your finger? No. Oh, that's, um, I think that's, uh, what's her name? She's a Riley Blake designer. Mm -hmm. Um, Jilly, Jill. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, Dina. Yeah. She's done some really cool designs. Uh, she did the young women's values fabric. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do. So is she still doing fabric stuff and life coaching or? Yeah, she actually does. um, She does some fabric lines, but she does uh, design work for life coaches. And she has a program where she teaches life coaches how to, it's called brand in a box. 
So she helps them like do their own branding and support them. And it's really very cool. I like this. So I am also very intrigued. I'm on my own health journey right now. Again, our brains, they're like, we have to have them, but they're our biggest enemy as well. You know, what can you share with those six things were, or is that something that you like, people have to hire you to learn these things? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot, like it's a lot to it, right? Like there's a, one of the, the main tools that she taught me is called the model. And the model helps us to distinguish between what we believe about ourselves and what's a fact. So I'll give you an example. So and I'll never forget this moment. It always kind of like makes me a little bit emotional because I was like sitting at my kitchen table. I was 40. What am I? I'm 49 now. So I was like 44, I guess. And I was perimenopausal and I felt like my life was just like total chaos. And I, I had gone to the doctor and I was having like those weird, like perimenopausal puzzle. Like sometimes that happens to women where they just like bleed like crazy and then they can't leave their house. And then, and then they don't have any period at all. And it just seems like, and then your, your, your belly fat just gets bigger and you're just like, I don't even know what my body's doing anymore. And then mm-hmm. your, you know, your libido kind of changes and all yeah. of those kinds of things start happening. And you're just like, no one talks about this. Yeah. And I went to my doctor and my doctor's like, well, just eat less and move more. And she was a woman and, oh. and she really had gone through menopause. And I was like, what do you mean? I go walking and I do all these things. And so I remember uh, my first call with Athena and I said, well, I just can't lose weight. And the way I said it was like, I believe that was a fact that was true. And she's like, well, that's actually just a thought. And I'm like, no, no, I could prove it to you. <laughs> I have like evidence. Like I stand on the scale and all of this. And we were able, she's like, you couldn't prove that in the court of law. You couldn't prove that you can't lose weight because in fact, when you wake up in the morning, you weigh less than you did when you went to bed that night. And so she was able to show me the difference between a thought and a fact. And as soon as I got that clarity and I realized we can control what we think and we can decide what we think. We're not a prisoner anymore. We're not. And so that model then shows us. So this is actually a fact. This is a thought I'm having. And then this is the emotion that comes from that thought. Because when we have a thought in our brain, the hormones are released, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So either we have like adrenaline or cortisol, or we have, um, like if you see a baby and you're like, oh, that baby's so sweet, right? Like you have like that reaction. And, um, So the emotion is then the fuel for our actions. So that's what motivates us to do whatever we're doing or keeps us from doing what we really want to do. And then whatever we spend our time doing in those actions, that creates our results. And so that is one of the main coaching tools that I use. And then we have lots of other tools that help us. It's like if I was saying, okay, we're going to clean out my garage. And I have these different tools to use them. It doesn't, then I could say, I could say, okay, I'm going to do a keep giveaway and maybe pile. That's a tool that helps Hmm, us. Okay. So that's what coaching tools are like. It's like life is 50, 50 to be balanced in life. 50% has to be good. And 50% has to be bad. And so during your day, if you're feeling like, oh, like, I'm not going to get what I want. And I, 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 I keep gaining weight and I can't lose it there's going to be negative thoughts and there's going to be negative things happen and they just come and you just let them be there. So now you're not fighting against them, like trying to push down a beach ball. You're like, Oh, that's just the negative part of the day. I have those thoughts. They come back. I don't really want to keep them, but they, they come and I don't fight against them. So love that. that's, that's kind of another example of a tool. So if I'm like that, the person being 20 minutes late to show up for the consult today, and I wanted to talk to her, but I also had to commit to my commitment with you. It's like, oh, that's a bummer. I can only talk to her for 10 minutes, but turns out she signed up anyway. So that's awesome, right? Like, but there is that negative. I don't fight against it. Like life is so terrible. Why can't people be more respectful of my time? Just like, oh, that's a bummer. We end, but 10 How, minutes. Is- I mean, it's such a powerful thing that you're talking about, but there's like divots in our brain where it defaults to these paths that we've done. So 
for our health, for business, for relationships, whatever it might be, we fall back to, oh, I'm so upset or, oh, I can't do this or whatever. How, what, are there some practices like, oh, I recognize I'm feeling this way or what, what helps to like rewire that? Well, think about when you drive down a road enough times, the road really will have those um, ditches, right? What are they called again? Like, why am I a divot? Is that like a divot or there's like a special, like, where's a word for it? Like, I don't know. Anyways, I will think of it. But yeah, so you, you, and the problem is, and I, I, I'm from Canada, we have lots of snow here. So if you always go through that snow, and if you're in those ruts, there you go, the ruts there on the road, the sword, um, your car actually gets controlled by the ruts. So if you're driving on snow, do not go in the ruts. You need to go on the other parts because of, that way you have more control. Because if you go in the ruts, just like you think about a roller coaster, they're mm-hmm. on those tracks, right? It will not go off, which is safe for the roller coaster, but that's not for you driving. And so I really encourage you when you find yourself, I I teach my clients to look for red flags. So I'll give the example of food. So when you feel stressed out, so many people just find themselves in front of the pantry Mm -hmm. and they're like, okay. So I say to them, what are the red flags before you go to the pantry or even like you're at the pantry? What do we do next? Or you're eating, you're like halfway through a bag of chips and you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not hungry. I'm just doing this because I feel really bad about myself. And then they can recognize it and say, oh, welcome to being a human. I'm having a human experience. And in the past, I would try to take the edge off by eating these chips. But eating the chips doesn't help me solve the problem. So what actually could help me? And then imagine you've got a toolbox and you're like, oh, I know I can just feel my feeling right now, or I can just recognize this is the 50% of the day. That's not so awesome. And that's okay. Another one I have is I imagine there's a little alien on their shoulder that doesn't have a human body. And so I invite them to like describe what is the feeling you're having right now and describe that to the alien. And so they all like, imagine they have this little like (laughs) on my shoulder. Like, okay. So my stomach is like really tight and I feel all sorts of pressure. And the alien's like, okay, tell me more. What is it like to have a human body, having a human experience, Hmm. right? And so that's super helpful. So you, you talk it through and just like you would with a kid, you know, Mm -hmm. you have kids and they're like, they didn't get invited to the birthday party. And you're like, okay, that's, I know it's a bummer. Tell me how you feel. And we don't often think about how we feel or what that's doing to our body. Well, two things I'm thinking of one, I, why, why are we so afraid of the hard feelings, you know, the, the negative, the hurt. Think about it. When you were little, your parents didn't want you to cry or they didn't really know how, and I, I don't blame my parents. Um, but they didn't have those strategies. They didn't understand the power of just allowing the feeling. And so they would give you cookies or suckers or ice cream, or, um, like even at church, right? Like they, people just like feed them fishy crackers. Yeah, that's true. And so we, we just haven't learned how to just sit with our feelings. We haven't learned to allow your, allow our feelings. Mm-hmm. And say, hey, thank you, brain, like brain, you're doing a great job. And cause every time we have a thought emotions are re- like the hormones are released. So you're like, good job. That's, that's an appropriate feeling. Like when my grandma died, I want to feel sad because that is an appropriate emotion. Yeah. And when that person cut me off on the road, I want to feel a little ticked off. Um, I don't want to have road rage, but I'm like, it's okay for me to feel a little ticked off. I'm just going to yeah. let that be in there. And then it can just pass. Just emotions are just waves. They just come and then they just go. It's there. You don't have to, I think just a um, part of that. I think a lot of people are afraid of depression. Yes. They're afraid of like, if I just let this emotion, I will become a depressed person. But what the reason they're getting depressed is that just like I explained with the ball, beach ball, if you're trying to, you're using all your energy to suppress that emotion, it's really a lot of work. So people who are resisting, reacting and avoiding emotions, 
that's what causes depression, mm-hmm. not, Hey, I'm feeling pretty disappointed that that thing just happened to me. I'm just going to sit here for probably two minutes and just let my stomach feel knotted and heavy. And my chest feels like an elephant has stepped on it. And I'm just going to just let myself have that normal human experience. I really like this. It's very liberating for me. I didn't know I needed this so much right now myself. And I do find we had talked and we'll, we'll get into more of like the health thing, but this mind work, and I am curious, I just chatted with someone yesterday who was like, has a very well-paying job. Their husband has a well-paying job. And they're so worried about money and finances and we're not going to have enough and I'm not going to be successful and money, 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 it kept coming up. What can you speak to that? Absolutely. So we have our identity, right? Like, so our identity and Joe, just Dr. Joe Dispenza, he says, your personal reality makes your personal personality. So if you have always grown up with money is always scarce. We have to be really careful with money. We have to be um, like a really good steward of money. And if if you've grown up, that's how you react with money. It's kind of like the guy down the road. If you, people always say like, yeah, that neighbor, he's a jerk and he's not very nice. You're going to be really nervous about that guy. Or if you have this woman and someone says, oh, she's so generous. She's so kind. Then you just automatically think that she's generous and kind. And that's just how you treat her. So if money has always been talked about, it's like, it's hard to find, you have to work really hard. You have to put in, you know, a lot of effort, then that becomes your relationship with money. And I've done a ton of work with money and it was, it's so mind blowing because that you, when you go from a place of scarcity all the time, think about movie stars. They have tons of money and they're super skinny and not all of them, but a lot of them are. And they have like, you know, ripped abs and all these things. They commit suicide or they have, they, they're in drug rehab because they think that changing how much money you have or your body is going to change it. But unless you actually internalize, like, this is now my identity. I am someone who makes I have so much value in the world and people pay me lots of money to be this uh, in their movie. And it's like, I, I am that person, but that is me. So when you can take that identity on, you become a, you just own it. That just becomes who you are. But the problem with these, like your friend and movie stars and all that, they think, well, wait a minute. I thought I was going to be different. Mm -hmm. I thought that it was going to be different, but they, they also fight with the, the, the principle I talked about the tool of 50, 50 regardless of how much money you make, how much stardom you have, your life will not be 60% amazing and 40% not, or 80% amazing and 20% not. It's always going to be 50, 50. The grass is not greener on the other side. That is true. Yeah. So accepting that and like having that identity will make all the difference because that is who you are. And too many people feel like they have to be someone that's with weight loss. That's what I teach women. I said, listen, you gotta, I, my program is going to love yourself. Then you have to love or you know, you can't love it quite yet, but just accept like, Hey, I have a body and it's a little bit funny. I got some rolls. I got some, of this, I'm like, I have teeth that work really well. And I have eyes that see, and my hands, even though they might be pudgier than I want, they all, they, they like rotary cut, like nobody's business and they iron things. And they make like meals for people and they drive cars. Like my hands are pretty awesome. So you start changing this relationship and how you look at yourself. And you're like, this body, you know, she's good to me. I put a lot of extra weight on her and she still goes, (laughs) right? Like that's that. And so then you start changing the way you look at your body and you, how you appreciate your body. And then your identity of your body is like, you know what? I don't have to be a certain weight before I can appreciate that I have hands and I have a nose and eyes. And then the more you appreciate your body, guess what you're going to do? Treat it better. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, let's go to bed early tonight. I think that would be a good idea. Oh, let's drink some (laughs) water. That would be good too. Right. 
Let's move yeah. on. And it's interesting because this health journey that I'm on, I mean, you know, I've come a long way. I really have, but there's all the setbacks. And so it's really nice to hear like, that's a human experience and just sit with that. Oh, I'm human. And it's not going to be perfect all the time. And I'll make mistakes and I'll feel frustrated and just sit with that. And that's all right. And onward and upward, you know, and just move on. There's another tool that I, I want to share with you. Um, and it's, it's a, this idea of a spiral curriculum. So ha- being a human is like an evolution, right? Like think about when you were little, tying shoelaces were like the biggest deal in the world for you at that yep. time. And now it's like no big deal. You tie your shoes, you can chew gum and talk to people. And it's like, you don't even think about it. You're like, I just tied my shoes. It's true. So, like when you're in kindergarten, like I use the math example. I used to be a school teacher. I taught school for 10 years. So in kindergarten, you have like blocks. You're like three blocks plus two blocks. Now you have five blocks. And then in grade one, they teach you like, this is the numeral three and this is the numeral two. And then here's a little sign that means we're going to add them together. And this is the sign that means this is what it equals to. And then of course, that just gets harder and harder. So the problem that we have, and I'm thinking for your, your health journey is you mastered the blocks. You mastered numerals. You even mastered like long division. You got that far, but now you're having this new challenge and you're frustrated because you're like, but wait a minute, I like have done all of this other stuff. I'm like really good at long division even. And we're like, yeah, that's awesome. But you're a human having a human experience and in order, and we want to evolve. That is part of our DNA. And so that means that we have to go to that next level, which the beautiful thing is you actually have skills to build because if to go from blocks to long division, you learned a whole bunch of things. But if you're not acknowledging your path and your journey and how far you've come, it's going to take away from your experience of getting to that new challenge of whatever that next math problem is going to be. Right. Hmm, Very cool. And it is, you know, you add a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. And so when people do reach out to work with you is it's generally with weight loss. Is that right? Well, so imagine we're at a, like a house, right? So the house says weight loss for quilters. And so you walk in the front door and you're like, okay, I'm going to work with this girl to help me lose weight. But in the living room, we're going to talk about your marriage. And then in the kitchen, we're going to talk about weight loss. And then in the dining room, we're going to talk about your mother-in-law. And then upstairs in one of the bedrooms, we're going to talk about um, your neighbor. And then we're, so because weight loss is really not about food. Yeah. It's about how you cope, how you think, how you, you know, and I, I love that people have chosen food as their nemesis right. like you know fentanyl or right. <laughs> pornography or alcohol or you know something like that I'm like good job like <laughs> the thing we need to live right right but uh, or like people pleasing or perfectionism we talk about that in the other bedroom and then in the studio we're going to talk about uh, all these different things that come up because weight loss really if I mean we could wallpaper excuse me the world with all the books. If mm-hmm. we printed off all the diet books in the world, like there are so many diets don't work. It's how do you use food in your life and how do you take care of yourself? And until you learn how to differentiate those things and how to really help yourself, you're not going to be able to move forward. I mean, this is so true with anything business, like, Mm -hmm. so would you work with someone who came to you and said, I want to chat business? I mean, it sounds like you have the skills to help with. Oh, totally. So what I do is how my business is structured is I have a lifetime membership. So when I first started my business, I was like, you know, I had the business people, I had the weight loss people, I had all the people, right? And then I, just for marketing purposes, and you know, this is a (laughs) market. If you are talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So mm-hmm. I got very specific. I am the weight loss coach for quilters. And I, I also it. say anyone else who resonates with my message. And this is my message. Love yourself thin. 
learn to accept yourself exactly how you are, learn to love yourself. I'm going to teach you some basic weight loss science because you can't fight the science. I'm going to teach you how to make your own eating plan. I'm going to teach you how to feel your feelings instead of eat your feelings. I'm going to teach you how to stop blaming people and stop shaming yourself. I'm not good enough story. Yeah. And then I'm going to teach you how to build self-confidence. And so I did that. I had like 23 one-on-one clients for like a year. And then I started in groups. So I take 20 ladies at every 12 weeks and we would go through this process. And then I started my lifetime membership last January. And so people now they get three coaching calls a week. There's all the modules and the worksheets and the portal. It's amazing. And all these bonus classes. And right now we're really focusing on menopause and, um, and that's open all all the time. And it's $2,000 and I have some payment plan options. And that's, that is what I have. And that's lifetime access for $2,000. It's like a steal of a deal. I can't believe it. You're going to have to change that model. That's like a really good deal. I feel like I should hop on that. Yeah, yeah, totally can. And so, um, yeah, a lot of business coaches are like, you should not do that. And I was like, nope, that's, I'm, I'm confident in my, in my approach. And then I have, I have just a few spots for myself that I, cause I just love one-on-one coaching. Mm -hmm. So I have a few open. And, um, so I have my, price point of working with me one-on-one for six months. And then I have a coach who I have coached for three years. She's lost 70 pounds. She's become a a certified life coach. And so some people can work with her. So the lady I just had a consult with today, she's going to work with her now. And so I, um, so that's how my work. And then I do some retreats. And in fact, you know, it's going to be really fun. I think I'm going to do a cruise where I teach people how to eat around perfect copious amounts of food. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, so I do some retreats just because I also love that connection and being with women and that just fuels me and it it's a really fun way to serve my ladies. So I have a retreat in September here on the island that's going to be very amazing. cool. Yeah. So okay, first of all, what platform are you hosting all of your stuff on? Like I use Kajabi for my stuff. What yeah. you- so I have I just hired a so I have Entreport is my like email system and all of that. So I can kind of find all the details of things. Um, but I just hired a company, a group of women actually, and they created a portal for me. Mm-hmm. and through my website. And, um, so yeah, it's a beautiful portal and it has like all the replays of all the calls and all the bonus classes. And it has a tracking system for women. So they can kind of keep on track of what modules they've watched and m- they rewatch the modules because their brain changes. So oh, when yeah. they watch the first module, the first time around, and the second time they watch the first module, they're like, uh, is that even like the same thing? <laughs> Did you change that video? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, and then we have a private Facebook group as well. And so that helps women, those who want to, they connect. And then we also have an ask a coach feature. So it's an anonymous way of asking me, uh, my coaches questions, because sometimes it's uncomfortable. Uh, We do delve into, um, especially as we get older, our libido changes and all of Mm -hmm. that. And I want women to have, I want them to keep enjoying sex. Like, right. Exactly. A great way to connect with your partner with yourself, like having that joy in your body that like your body is meant to have that kind of joy. Yeah. So sometimes we talk about things like that, that some people might be a little bit more shy to ask in a group coaching situation, but yeah, big advocate of like helping women enjoy their bodies, their whole lives. And most of the ladies in my program, I'd say the average age is 65. Okay. Well, and I just learned I did not know this, but I was talking to my therapist and she was like, you know, you should get some blood work done. Perimenopause starts at age 35. It can, you know, it's like starting your period. It can, you know, it's all over the place, but I did not know that as young as 35 is when perimenopause. And so perimenopause lasts, you tell me, I mean, well, that's the thing. It's all over the, all over the board. And you know, they, they do actually have a hard time keeping up with women health just because they haven't been studying women health for as long as men health. So right. even with like hormone replacement therapy, that that was a bit of a gong show, especially at the beginning, they were using like cow urine and 
you know, so it, and they were, they didn't have these widespread studies that they have now. So they have come a long way with hormone replacement therapies, but I, I actually, the work that I do with women helps them so much with creating safety in your own body and like grounding yourself. So your hormones aren't all over the place. You're able to reduce our stress. Cause one thing that I, I didn't, I didn't realize. So obviously when your ovaries go out of business, they're not producing <laughs> like all the estrogen and progesterone that they were to have your cycle going, right. The cycle was, was all scheduled and well, ideally it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and so then your adrenal glands, which sit on your kidneys and adrenals, what their main job is to produce cortisol, adrenaline, and this th- thing called DHEA, which is a horm- it's an enzyme that goes into your blood and it transfers um, your different cell parts into estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. Hmm. So the problem is if you have high amounts of stress, then you're not your body actually can't produce the amount of estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone that it needs. Your ovaries will still produce a little bit, but there's women, it's like everywhere I turn, it's like I had a hysterectomy, I had a hysterectomy. So yeah. now, oh, yeah. So now your adrenals are having to work even more. There is, and then the other part that uh, is a problem is that in our fat cells, they do some transferring of estrogen. And so if you have more fat cells going into menopause, it's going to produce it more and you're going to have like an estrogen dominance. And that's Mm -hmm. also going to wreak habit with having like that inner balance in your life. So the way I help women balance their hormones is through regulating their nervous system so that they feel more calm. So they're not needing to have so much stress on that cortisol and your adrenaline. Interesting. Well, and it's very odd. It feels like when I was 12 or whatever, I read this book, like, dear God, are you there? It's me, Margaret. And I felt like I I shouldn't be reading it. And I hid it under my pillow because I didn't want my mom knowing I was reading it, but I was very curious. I'm like, tell me more. I feel like I'm that girl again. And I'm like, what's menopause? Can someone tell me, you know? No one talks about it. It's hush hush. And when they do, it's nightmarish. Like, oh, it's terrible. You're going to hate life. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't buy that. You know, I don't. I agree with you. And I think that, um, so even like, even in my own family, when I would reach out to like aunts or my sister or whatever and say like, Hey, talk to me about this. And I, and one of the doctors that I studied, she's actually Canadian. And she said, menopause is adolescence in reverse puberty, pre puberty in reverse. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely want to be a megaphone to helping women. And the, because one of the things that I have helped a lot of women with is hot flashes. Mm -hmm. So when you're having a hot flash, it's like, take a breath and say, Hey, what's going on body? What do you need? And so when you can just be calm with the hot flash, then usually you have some level of Oh, I'm just feeling some guilt right now. That's all. My body wants me to pay attention. This, this seems a little bit dangerous. Hmm. So when those kinds of things are starting to happen, then you just, you don't, you don't react to it. You don't start shaking your fist like, Oh, menopause is the worst. And because that just increases your progesterone. And then you have another imbalance. I have an excellent worksheet that I will have. You can, I'll include it in your show notes. You can, you can put it and it's an excellent resource. It's like 25 pages. And I, the way that I approach teaching anything, I used to be a grade five, six teacher. So I take something that's kind of like more complicated and in books, they seem like really hard to understand. And I take it into like very like understandable bite-sized pieces that don't, don't seem so crazy. Another thing just to kind of add to that, our thyroid um, affects our metabolism, like how we burn fat. And so a lot of women that work with me have thyroid, I would say 95% of women that work with me have thyroid issues. And as I teach them how to speak their truth, not sugarcoat what they say and start like really speaking genuinely, authentically to them, they either get off of their medication altogether or they reduce it dramatically. 
Wow. It's insane. And if they don't feel like they're ready to like say their truth yet, if they, if they're in a, maybe like not a great marriage or relationship or with a, with a boss or something, even when I, I say to them, just sing 15 minutes a day, just giving that their vocal cords, that kind of joy and that kind of like happy vibration is enough of a balance. Um, to help them to increase their metabolism and to improve their thyroid. Wow. That is so cool. Okay. And this is a very woo thing for me to ask, but when is your birthday? When were you born? Cause I, you're a teacher and I'm a Sagittarius and someone's like, Oh, that means you're a teacher. So I'm curious if you're Sagittarius. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a scorpion November 3rd. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm November 25th. I, I don't know anything else except Someone said that. So I was curious yeah. if you are, yeah. but okay. Neither here nor there. Um, okay. Before we started talking about this, we touched on, and I want to touch on this before we go showing up for yourself. So showing up for yourself is something that's really hard for a lot of women. And one of the problems with women is they wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. And so I'll speak from personal experience. So when I got married, I was married at like 28 and I am from, a, I think, I believe we're the same like religious background uh -huh. and in our church culture, it's very uncommon. It's getting more and more. It's not as uncommon, but for a single person at 28, it seems like they're really old to get married. Right. And so people would say to me, like, what's wrong with you? You you're so cute. You're so, you know, you have so much going for you. And so we have these different hats of like how we're supposed to behave or like, and then you have this idea of like, this is the kind of wife I should be. And this is the kind of mom I should be. And so we grow up our whole lives thinking I have to be a certain way. And, but we don't always recognize like that's optional or, so I, like my mom growing up, like if, if our house wasn't clean, she couldn't sleep and we would go to other people's homes. And she, like, I honestly thought you were not a good person. If you had a messy house, right. Like I'm all laughing because there are things that I grew up with too, where I'm like, Oh yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So if my house was in any disorder, I just felt like the worst ever. Like I was the worst mom. I was the worst wife. Like what's wrong with me. And so if we're wearing these hats, but we didn't actually decide what that role was, then we're, we actually are living a life of a lot of fear. Yes. And I help a lot of women who have anxiety and anxiety is going to the worst case scenario and staying there. And so learning how to just be okay with having, having fearful thoughts or having I think thinking people are going to judge me if my house isn't clean or whatever. Or my mom's going to be upset with me. Or I'm, I remember one time my husband, I was like pregnant with my fourth and my husband, and I was like, I'm just so tired. He's like, you can feed the kids cereal for dinner. And I was like, no, you can't. You cannot do that. He's like, no, it's totally fine to have cereal for dinner. And I was like, really? You're allowed? Like, that's the thing. Like we have all these different people trying to tell us what you're supposed to be. And then you believing it kind of like diets. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is that when you don't make your own rules and you don't own those rules and you don't like really get into your authentic self, you live a life of like frazzled anxiety, fear. It, it's a, it's a really hard way to live. And How it's even do you live in a world though? Cause I'm, yeah. I'm seeing this right now. First of all, I've just really hurt someone's feelings because I tried to live their standard of what they thought was important. And I was like, Oh, let me jump in and help. And I did not care to that level, you know? And so at point is if you're living to other people's standards, you'll be frazzled. You'll end up hurting yeah. feelings. You'll drop the ball, blah, blah, blah. But then how do you write your own rules and live your own truth when it doesn't co like line up with society or other people? Do you just sit with that discomfort? Like they may not like this, but this is what's important to me, you know? Yeah. Well, this is what I would say is we actually don't have that kind of power to make other people feel anything. Okay. Did I just say that I made someone feel this is very okay. All right. That I hurt someone's feelings. So the problem is if you think 
that, and I'm not saying you like, but Mm -hmm. as a person, like if you honestly think that you have the power to change how other people feel, then that's really scary. Yes, it is. That means that you think that they have the power to make, to change how you feel. Well, and I've been uncomfortable to be around them because I'm like, I could do anything at any moment and make them feel this way. And I don't know. And so. Well, and it's even like, um, I see this even with myself. So having lost 50 pounds, um, I, I am much thinner now. Right. And I'm this tall blonde, I'm six feet tall. Oh, cool. And so, yeah, I know it's fun. So I'm this like tall blonde, 49 year old woman who is pretty thin and you know, people will come up to me and they'll say, you had five children. How is that possible? How did, and it, it makes me really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm just like, uh, oh, uh, it's kind of weird that like random guys come up to me that and is weird. <laughs> women and stuff will say things. And, and I've learned just to be like, yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? And my kids are big. Like I have like my 14 year old is six foot three and like, they're just all, and they have red hair. And so people are allowed to say what they say. And I'm actually allowed to think what I want. So I'm allowed to think that's gross. Like some weird guy at Wendy's is like commenting on my body. So he's allowed to say things to me and I'm allowed to think what I want. And I'm actually allowed to say to him, Hey, that's not really that appropriate to like comment about my body in my mind. Like, I don't really appreciate it. I'm Mm -hmm. allowed to say that too. Yeah. So I'm not living in fear because the thing is people we'll say things. And now that we have the internet, you know, you've got your cyber bullies, you've got all of that, but we can't live in fear. And so you work with women who want to create beautiful quilting patterns and to find their voice and to help other people find their voice and say, Hey, you know, let's do this. There are going to be people that don't like their quilting patterns. Mm-hmm. And that's, it. yep. That's totally fine. But even if one person found your quilting pattern and loved it, how fun is that? Or even if you loved it, even if nobody bought it, but you love the process, how fun is that, that you did that for yourself? And how do you navigate? Let's say you write patterns, right? Quilt patterns. You put a pattern out and someone comes to you and says, Hey, I'm really disappointed. Your pattern has a mistake in it. So I'm just bringing it down to a very base level. Cause it yeah, could be all fair. levels of like, just someone's upset or hurt. And yes, you have made a mistake. Yeah. What does that mean? Cause generally it's like, I'm the worst, you know? So how, how do we navigate that? This is, this is so fun. My husband will come home some days and not so much now because the kids are older and stuff, but he'd come home and, and he'd be like, wow, this house is kind of messy. And I'm like, yeah, it's a bummer. The house is not self. <laughs> we're we're going to get to that at some point. And now that I have like an 18 year old daughter and like my kids are older, they actually clean the house. Like I have a self-cleaning house, like laundry just shows up on my bed and like meals are just cooked. And I'm like, it's happened. It's arrived, <laughs> husband, right? Like, so it does happen. Okay. It does happen. But so, but I used to say to my husband, I'm like, yeah, that's a bummer. It's a bummer that this house is kind of messy. Like it's a, like, it's too bad. The kids are so messy. And sometimes I am too, because I actually chose to go to the park instead of cleaning, but don't worry on Mondays. I always wash the floor. And I spot clean in between. So (laughs) that's how, that's what I talk about getting your back. So if someone writes a pattern and they make a mistake, you're like, you only found one. I'm a human. Like I'm sure there's going to be more. One time this lady came into the quilt shop and she was complaining about her long armor saying how in how many mistakes she made and all of this. And then she turns around and says, can you quilt this for me? Custom quilt. And I said, no. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, what do you mean? And I said, no, I said, I'm a human. I am not a robot. I will, I am sure I will do one thing, especially with your magnifying glass that you're putting on these quilts. I'm like, I won't do it. And mm-hmm. she's like, oh, please. And I said, okay, I will only quilt for you if you promise not to criticize me in front of other people and not to scrutinize in that way because it's not serving you and it's definitely not serving me. And it was so interesting. So I did the custom quilting for her and it turned out really well. And then even when I moved here and I was still quilting for people, she'd like mail the quilts to me because she, <laughs> but I, it was, it was like, we have to have these realistic expectations and there, of course, there's going to be mistakes and patterns. Yeah. We're at like two in the morning and we have a deadline and 
you know, even we had an editor who edited it. They don't always see everything either. Yeah. Even if you're really worried about that, you can put it on your pattern. Say there will probably be mistakes and there will be ways that I will explain the pattern that doesn't work with your brain. And that's okay. Yep. Your person. Oh, that's so liberating. Like I just feel a weight lifted off my shoulder just hearing this. Well, one lady, I was doing an Instagram story and I was chewing gum and she's like, why are you chewing gum? That's so unprofessional. And I said, nobody's making you watch my videos. Yes, that's my thing. Well, and I do find a lot of times people have these rules that they have been taught and they assume that everyone else subscribes to those rules and if they don't, well, how dare they, you know, and it's, that's our belief system. It's a very interesting thing to watch, you know? Yeah. Well, my dad told me when I had roommates, he said, if you have a problem with your roommate, it's your problem. So if your roommate scra- like scrapes her teeth against the fork, I personally think that's like the, one of the most annoying sounds in the world, <laughs> but she doesn't. Right. And so who am I to say, Hey, you're a terrible roommate because you're doing that with your teeth. I can just decide to leave the room when she eats. I can just decide to just deal deal with it or put some headphones on or whatever. Like that's actually my problem. It's Mm -hmm. not her problem. She has, she's totally allowed to put her teeth on her fork that way. My husband will be very happy you're saying this because I I am like auditory. I don't know what, but when people chew with their mouth open, it's like a physical response. And to know that that's me and like, hey, put on some headphones then like, take care of it. That's a you thing. You know, he'll be like, yes, this was the best podcast episode ever. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, we should wrap it up. I could chat all day with you, but this has been so fun. We'll have to meet up in real life. Uh, But for people who want to find you, where is the best way to find you? Yeah. So I have um, an Instagram account, Dara underscore Thomason, Tom ass on. That's how you spell it. (laughs) I like it. You can also say two mass on, but Tom ass on will probably <laughs> more memorable. Be yeah. Better. Yeah. Um, my website is also darathomason.com and I have an amazing podcast and it's called love yourself. Thin. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. So we'll have that handout in the show notes for yes. anyone who wants to grab that. Thanks oh, so I also have a free Facebook group. It's oh, called, awesome. It's called liberate. Okay. And I have it's, it's like the free, free app and you, you know, there's ads and it's like (laughs) nothing like my lifetime membership, but I do have some prompts on Mondays and Fridays that just kind of get your mind into things. And then when I have master classes, you get them for free when you join my, um, weight loss, I mean, my, my, um, group, Facebook group. Mm -hmm. group. And this, I'm having a master class in June and it's a dieter retirement class. So I'm going to mm-hmm. teach you how to retire from dieting. It's going to be nice. awesome. We're going to have a retirement party. <laughs> Yay. Diet. I've always wanted one of those at this young age. So, <laughs> okay. I, I'll put the link to that in the show notes as well to the Facebook group. So Perfect. awesome. Thank you so much for being here. This was just a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Dara, thank you so much for being a guest on the Craft Your Career podcast. I'm so glad that you reached out. I I loved chatting with you. The insights that we had, the things that you shared, it's just awesome. This is what life is all about, you know, figuring out how to improve, how to move past these ruts in the road, so to speak, and enjoy life. Enjoy that 50% and be okay with the 50% that's not as amazing and realize that we're in this human experience. So thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to leave a review for the Craft to Career podcast, and I'll see you back here next Friday with a brand new episode. Have a wonderful week.